Literally the only thing that you can predict when you're training your service dog out in public is that the unpredictable will happen. Okay, so we're definitely going to talk about service dogs, but have you all, like, ever eaten these mini Cadbury eggs? Like, oh my god, they're just, like, ridiculously good. I can't even handle it. All right, I figured I'd save you from listening to me chew. So, hi, I'm Laura from Doggy U, and I'm a certified service dog trainer and guide dog mobility instructor. And I'm also a service dog handler myself. And this week at the doctor, we had the most ridiculous thing happen to us. So, I'm going to tell you that story today. And then we're also going to talk about in the second half of the video how you can prepare your service dog for the weird and wild things that you are going to be encountering out in public because it's not if, it's when these things happen and that knowing how to handle those situations is a critical part of being a successful service dog team. So let's get into it. All right so let's start by setting the scene. I go to a small like normal doctor but like holistically focused. It's like in a little building. It's not at like a big doctor's office area or anything like that. Uh, so I'm in my exam room and I am in the middle of an EKG. So that means that I am not fully clothed. I've got, um, I'm wearing this like pack on my chest area with like a belt that goes around it. And I'm holding like these little sensor things in my armpits and like down the side. So I am in a precarious situation, um, as you can imagine. And I've got Cool Whip with me, but she is next to me. Like I'm on the table. She's next to me. I can't see her and I can't move very much for, because of the like we're actually doing a medical testy thing happening right now. Uh, so she's in her downstay and she has been for a while because they couldn't get the machine to work for the first three tries. So she's just been a lovely little girl just like hanging out when I start hearing scratching. So I'm like hearing down the hall and if you have a dog you know what that sounds like when there's that like claws on hardwood kind of sound. So I hear that coming down the hall and I'm like what is going on? Um, and then it gets really close and it's right at my door and I can hear like the sound of the dog like sniffing under the door. At this point, Whip stands up because I can hear her. So I can hear her stand up and I can kind of like see her a little out of my periphery. Now, this is an excellent time. So if you've seen me do the video where I start practicing my cues with a wall between me and my dog so that I can make sure that they can cue just off the verbal. So being able to just lay down when I ask without having to see me or give any hand signals or even eye contact. Um, perfect time for that because she gets up because the dog starts literally whining and low barking under the door of my exam room. So she stands up. I cue her to down. She immediately lays back down. I'm like, oh, thank goodness I worked on that. Um, so the dog is there for like, I don't know, back and forth down the hallway for like 10 minutes or so. And it's really confusing. I ask about it a couple of times while I'm doing this test, but the dog, like at one point, I can see its little nails coming under the door. It's snuffling, it's whining. And this is like a small area. There's not that much space between where the like intake area is and where my exam room is. So the dog, it seems to be like wandering back and forth for some reason. Um, and I'm like busy doing medically things and I was so proud of my dog for not barking, not like she stood up that one time, but she immediately laid back down when I asked her to. But there's a dog literally growling, low barking and snorfling under the door and she does not react. Now, mind you that she is essentially off leash during all of this. I've got a doctor in the room. She's on the side. The dog is outside the door being, I don't know, problematic, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then the testing ends and it's time for me to get dressed and it seems like the dog is no longer directly on the other side of the door, but I can still hear its nails on the floor. So it is still definitely somewhere in the building. So to release the tension for Whip, what I did is I release her from her downstay and I take her off leash for a minute. Not something that I would typically do, but she has endured something incredibly difficult and I need her to be able to decompress before we move on to the next part of this whatever, doctor's visit. Um, 
Plus, the dog is still out there, so I need her to, like, be able to just, like, shake off some of what just happened. So what I decided to do is do a little bit of pattern games with her, ask her to do a couple of tricks that she really enjoys, and reinforce her for those behaviors. And this is why I always recommend, even if your dog is fully trained, to bring along with you a few treats wherever you go so that in these different situations that you encounter, you can reinforce the positive behavior that you're seeing. So we do little things to decompress. I get her ready back in the mindset that we're working um, and we go out the door not knowing what to expect. I open the door and like I said this isn't a huge place so I see immediately that there is not a puppy uh, a adolescent dog that is brown and white probably close to 100 pounds 90 100 pounds on the end of a six foot leash in the waiting room. So luckily I can kind of like scoot by to get to where I need to go in the office. Um, and I just, you know, whip, sees the dog, makes eye contact with me, heels right by. I tell her she is the most fabulous animal ever. And we head into the other room that I need to go in uh, to talk to my main doctor. And the whole situation was just incredibly confusing because I do not know why that dog was there. It seems like it might have been somebody's friend. I, no idea. Um, was this a situation where I could have asked more questions and, you know, got to the bottom of what was happening? Yeah. And also, uh, that was all the spoons I had for the day. So doctor's appointments are super difficult for me. I had already been there for over an hour. This situation was happening and I just didn't have it in me that day to like have a big you know, fuss about it. In hindsight, would I have potentially handled it a little bit differently or on a day that I had just more mental bandwidth to deal with it? Probably. But I didn't. It is what it is. I ended up going out a side door so that I didn't subject my dog to having to go back by this dog on the way out. And the whole thing was just bizarre, right? But the thing about working a dog out in public is that those bizarre things are the norm. Things that you're not expecting to happen, happen all of the time. So now I want to talk about that and how to prepare you and your dog for these type of situations. I, uh, I actually made a list of some of the things that have happened when I've been out working that one wouldn't necessarily expect. So I want to give you some examples of stuff that's happened over my career when working with different guide dogs or my own service dog. The first is the Comic-Con bus. So this happened on the bus that I typically ride because it is so empty. You'll see it in my video, I'll link it up here, uh, that I use uh, with the poodle and her first bus trip. And I use that bus all the time because it's always empty. Well, I get on a bus this time and the next stop, about 25 people in full costume walk onto the bus and now the bus that was a totally empty bus easy training situation has now turned into all sorts of people dressed in all sorts of costumes so super challenging for any dog and they're all walking by my dog at the front of the bus that's just a thing that happened and that type of thing has happened more than once I mean, heck, I have a lot of clients that attend events like that. So desensitizing to costumes is really, really important. I've also been in like a bubble tea restaurant and in walks this man just like holding this 40 pound Shiba Inu and he walks like directly over my dog with the dog in its arms. You know, Cool Whip has no problem with that, but for a younger dog or a dog who hasn't seen a dog carried over them uh, in a restaurant where a dog isn't supposed to be before you know, that could be challenging for them. The amount of kids I've had run up to Cool Whip's face or one of my guide dogs that I'm training's face is pretty significant. Um, I've also had grown humans, like, wa <laughs> walking down the street, this person wanted to say hi to the dog and decided to drop to the ground in the street to say hi to the dog. That could be startling for a young dog. I've also been in cities where I'll come across, like, reenactment scenarios or like police officers on horseback trotting down the road. Um, I was in San Francisco once. I had whip with me uh, and we're around the Golden Gate Bridge area. And then like in a like wagon, there is an emotional support pig with like a sign on the side that's just like getting dragged through the crowd. Definitely that was a new one for me. I've also been at a fair park situation where a hot air balloon came down as part of the demonstration and landed in the middle of the field. 
So these are the things you might not think will happen out in public, and all of these things have happened, and so many more things that I'm just not thinking of off the top of my head. And then there's the normal but still difficult things that you have to prep a dog for that are definitely going to happen out in public, like crowding into a terminal or a tight space when you're trying to get from one terminal to another, or off-leash dogs running... <laughs> are you coming? Are you coming to join me? Hi. <laughs> So off-leash dogs running up to you in and outside of stores. Um, I mean, the off-leash dog thing, that is going to... <laughs> yeah? You think that's where you need to go? Okay. <laughs> All right. Back to the dog thing. Them coming up to you on and off-leash, in stores, on flexi-leads. You know, I've had one in the foyer of a Starbucks just loose in that, like, airlock section of it. You know, fairs, festivals, they're full of stuff. The dog thing is a big one because you're never going to get away from barky, lungy dogs, either in stores where they're not supposed to be or on flexi leads in stores where they are supposed to be or just running up to your dog. And the same goes with like off-leash children. Children are going to run up to your dog and you have to have a dog that can tolerate that stress and recover quickly from it. So it's important to remember that you're not going to change the world. It's always going to be weird and unpredictable out there. So you can either get mad about it or you can train your dog to expect the unexpected. And hey, y'all, before we move on to how you can help prepare your dog to succeed in these types of situations, I would love it if you did me a favor and headed on down to boop that like button. Doing so lets me know that you want more candid style videos like this and it helps others find the channel. So I'd really appreciate it. So let's talk about control. Control the things you can control, of course, but you're not going to be able to control everything. So your job as the human is to teach your dog and make them think that all of these weird things that are happening are just an elaborately set up training exercise that you've created for them so that they think everything they see that's like a little bit off is, oh, that's a training scenario. And when I'm in a training scenario, I look up at my mom and sometimes I get really great reinforcement for it. In the long run, this will serve you much better than getting mad at every misbehaving human that you encounter, because there'll be a lot of them. So to that end, it may look like some of the training that I do is silly. And that's because silly is fun and play is fun. But in reality, we're actually preparing dogs for the real world at home so that when something strange happens, they recognize it as a training exercise and not something to be worried about. Here's some of the ways that I prep dogs to expect the unexpected. Training offered eye contact. We want our dog to know that engaging with us is valuable without us having to ask for it. Training the engage disengage game. Teaching your dog this known behavior that when they see something that they find to be a little bit weird or distracting, they should go ahead and engage directly with me. I also do that exercise where I'm completely out of sight of the dog to proof my verbal cues, which came in handy for this particular situation. I'll also use patterns like pattern walking for walking over different surfaces or training with new things like a shopping cart. I'll train with a bag on my head to make sure that I'm not giving them any eye contact cues. And then we want to do general desensitization, like having the puppies eat snacks out of little hula hoops. I also just want to be weird, and I mean that in like the nicest way possible. I'm going to wear costumes, I'm going to wear silly hats, I'm going to train from sitting on the floor, I'm going to train from standing, I'm going to train with my back to my dog. I also employ my friends to help me with training, and we get to be silly together. So things like having multiple dogs downstay at restaurants together, or running back and forth while the dogs are doing a downstay, or carrying chairs over our heads, all sorts of things. I spend a lot of time with other dogs, because ignoring other dogs is a behavior that you really have to practice for most dogs over time. So you can see here that Cool Whip is hanging out with Tao, one of her friends, and Tao's tail is literally on her feet, and she's just ignoring it because it's a thing that we've practiced a lot. I'll really use anything that's off or out of place or weird as an awesome training opportunity. I mean, my friends will tell you that sometimes I just light up and get so excited when I see something weird that I get to train around. So those are just some of the ways that I personally prepare my dogs for workout in public, but of course it's not everything. So I would love for you to head on down to the comments and tell me what weird or wonderful things that you do to help prepare your dog for working around all the distractions that they're going to encounter in public. Okay, so that all being said, this isn't a video that's going to tell you that your dog needs to be perfect. That's an unreasonable expectation. But I also want to point out that you can't manage, treat, or correct away the underlying temperament of a dog when something weird happens out in public. 
the character and temperament underneath needs to be solid for your dog to be happy doing the job that we want them to do. So I used to work in guide dogs where it's harder to cover up the underlying temperament issues with management and training because the person using the dog typically can't visually spot the problem. The dog innately has to have a more solid temperament because the human's not going to be able to watch out for them or change direction or course before they encounter a problem. And that's the thing about being a sighted handler is that if I encounter a problematic situation, of course I'm going to move away from it. But you can't always. So it's all about preparing yourself for those situations and making sure that the dog you're asking to do this work is comfortable and capable of functioning when these inevitably stressful situations arise. Because they will. All right, y'all, if you love this video and you want to see more than 150 more videos from my exclusive members-only library while also supporting the work that I do here, starting at just $3, head on over to the Patreon community where you can join other like-minded individuals for my monthly live Q&As, deep dives, and exclusive videos. I am so grateful to my Patreon supporters because without them, I wouldn't be able to make these free videos available to you every week. And hey, if you liked this video, you'll definitely love this one too. So you should click on it now. You all have an awesome day and go be weird with your dog. <laughs> Happy training, y'all.